When you think, I can't do that, does that stop you? What would be possible for you if you didn't let that get in your way? You're listening to Peer Light, where we explore how you can believe in yourself and be happy with who you are so that you feel worthy of your craziest dreams and confident in your power to make them happen. My name is Aili. I'm a coach, writer, and Kundalini Yoga and meditation teacher. This is episode 89. And it's about how to change your negative thoughts, specifically the ones that are full of self-doubt and that are fear-based and that lead to self-sabotage. In the last episode, I was talking about how the biggest way we set ourselves up for failure is by assuming our negative thoughts are true and operating under that assumption. And I know from personal experience how easy it is to get stuck in a certain way of thinking. So I wanted to talk about how to change your thoughts today and how to change those negative thoughts Because it's easy to get stuck in that and then let that or allow that to make your decisions for you. So when you have an idea about something, whether it's about you and how you are, or about the world and how the world is, you usually act as if that idea is true. So if you're considering doing something risky, something outside your comfort zone, and you think something like, I'm strong, I'm capable, I can do anything you would be inclined to take the risk. And you would notice all the reasons you should do it, everything that supports that. But if you think something like, I can't do this, I've failed before, it'll never work, you probably wouldn't. And you would notice all the reasons that you shouldn't take the risk. So in both cases, you would probably be acting as if your idea is true. So if you believed you could do it, you would take the risk. And if you believed you would fail, you probably wouldn't. And in both cases, you're also looking for evidence to confirm it and probably dismissing any evidence that contradicts the ideas, the things that you're thinking. And this is called confirmation bias, which means we basically see the world in, we see the things that we already believe. And the only real difference between the scenario where you think you should take the risk and the one where you think you shouldn't is what you think about it. What you think about whether or not it's possible, whether or not you're capable, whether or not you'll fail or succeed, and whether or not it's worth the risk. So it's all based on thoughts. It, it's based on the thoughts you have about the situation and yourself and your capabilities. And those thoughts are based on the perspective that you have on all those things, which is often informed by past experience. And that perspective may or may not be a conscious choice. There's always a perspective we take when we look at something or think about something. We just may not always be aware of it. So in this example, the first perspective is one of having belief in your abilities. And the second one is one of having doubt. If you keep acting in a way that feeds that perspective, so for example, not trying because of the thought, I can't, I failed before, you'll keep thinking that way. In order to change your thoughts, you need to break the pattern of feeding them. In other words, you need to stop acting as if what you think is true. You need to do things to challenge your thoughts. And you need to suspend judgment about what might happen. Because if you go into it thinking like, okay, I'll try, but I'm still going to fail. You'll be bringing that energy or that intention into your actions. So you need to go in with curiosity and an open mind kind of thinking something like, hmm, I wonder what'll happen. And then give it your best shot and give yourself the gift of that possibility. And here's why you need to actually do something as in take action. If you just think about it, nothing will change. And if you try to convince yourself mentally that you can do it before actually trying, you're basically creating a battle inside your mind and trying to trying to overwrite one thought with another. So it might sound something like, you can't do this. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. Because the mind will just keep reacting to whatever thought comes up. And that can get draining really quickly. And in terms of the teachings of Kundalini Yoga, there are three minds. There's the negative mind, the positive mind, and the neutral mind. The negative one is the protective one, the one that kind of wants us to stay contained. The positive one is the one that helps us expand and grow. 
And the neutral one is the one that comes from a place of being grounded and centered. So there aren't really assumptions. It's just the place of having an open mind. And if you get stuck in a battle between the negative mind and the positive mind, it doesn't move anything forward because it's all at the mental level. And that's why you need to act. And that's also why you need to go in with an open mind and without any assumptions about what's going to happen. So from that place of neutrality, it's a lot easier to change your thoughts if you create new evidence for yourself. Because if you're trying to convince yourself you can do it, you could end up doing that forever. But if you act, even if you fail, you can see yourself as the kind of person that tries, the kind of person that has that level of courage, and the kind of person that's willing to take that risk. Confidence isn't something you can convince yourself of. It's about the willingness to try and giving yourself permission to take a chance. Because when you do that, you create evidence that you're the kind of person who has the confidence to do that thing. So in a way, it doesn't really matter if you failed, because you see yourself in a new light. You're now the kind of person who does that courageous thing, and who doesn't let the negative thoughts get in your way. And here's something else to consider. Successful people have self-doubt too. It's not like they're free of it. They just choose to act in spite of it. Even Maya Angelou had it. She once said, I've written 11 books, but each time I think, "Uh uh-oh, they're going to find me out now. So just remember, unless you're consciously choosing to question your thoughts, you're probably going to act as if they're true. And by doing that, you're going to keep feeding them. Unless you choose to break that pattern and act in a different way, so to make a different choice and act as if it isn't true, act as if you don't have any assumptions about whether or not it's true, from that place of neutrality and openness. And honestly, this is one of the main reasons I created Become Your Bravest Self, because it'll help you break the pattern of talking yourself out of doing the thing that scares you. I'll put a link to it in the show notes for this episode, which you can find at purelightpodcast.com. And you can also find it at becomeyourbravestself.com. And if you want more stuff like this, subscribe to Pure Light wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, may you be guided by your light.